Hey yo guys, I'm here to give you my thoughts on some topics as you know there's always stuff to talk about in the world of combat sports. Um let's go over to MMA first as today there was a big story in MMA as the UFC and Dana White, I guess, you know, they decided they were going to cut some of their top fighters. Uh they cut Christian Welsh as well as uh one of their top five welterweights in the world in John Fitch. And basically this is stemming from the fact that, you know, uh, the American Kickboxing Association, which is where, you know, John Fitch and, you know, Josh Koscheck, Christian Welsh, and uh, Mike Swick, you know, they all train there, uh, didn't want to sign an agreement which, you know, basically was to give away their rights strictly to the UFC forever. And to me, that's always a risky situation because if you become famous somewhere else, you know, you can't, you know, you get to use your likeness, you know, in games or toys or anything like that. All that is owned with the UFC, and that, to me, is just never a good thing. I mean, the WWE always does this. They always try to get people to change their name so they can own that, and, you know, when you leave the company, you can at least, you know, be able to make money and get likenessness uh, anywhere else in any other on your own name and you know, help get some residuals uh and that's you know kind of hard is in the world of mixed martial arts when you're you know fighting on your own name um unless you know you trademark your own name or anything like that you know it's pretty tough there and you know uh, the american kickboxing uh, ca uh association camp uh, they didn't want their fighters signing it and to me i agree with them i mean i wouldn't give up my rights to you know just the ufc i mean to be in their video game i mean this also off um, THQ to an extent because THQ wanted to have all these likeliness signed to them for this video game due to the fact that EA Sports is going to be creating a mixed martial arts video game uh, with you know well-known fighters who you know are you know unable to be controlled due to the fact that they have different types of deals in the UFC like Randy Couture is going to be in the game and Chuck Liddell is going to be in the game as well as you know array of fighters from other promotions but you know that's why the UFC wanted to have you know guys these guys signed this contract and them not signing it pissed Dane off so he decided you know what I'm gonna release them and you know I kinda disagree with that I mean considering you know you released Josh uh, you're about you're probably gonna thinking about release Josh Koscheck if he loses this fight to uh, Yoshida on December 10th on the ultimate fight night um, with fight for the troops um, I don't know if you strictly do it straight away due to the fact that uh, Koscheck was able to save UFC 90 basically by uh, picking up the slack for the fact that Diego Sanchez got hurt and couldn't fight Diego Alves. Uh, and he also put on a really good fight on you know short notice. I don't know if he'll get cut straight away, but I'd expect him to get cut pretty soon due over this. Um, what else, Who else? Uh, I mean, Mike Swick will not get cut because he signed the deal and he has a completely different than most of uh, the other mainstay fighters. So... I don't know, I'm, this is a whole, this is the weird thing too, is that, you know, apparently, uh, uh, Lorenzo Fertitta was able to get, uh, John Fish to sign this deal, and I think this, that goes to show lengths about how Dana's at conducting business. I mean, Dana's is a good businessman, but sometimes he, when some things don't go his way in a deal, he'll start acting pretty immature and childish, you know, he will you know, giving threats to Fitch, uh, you gotta sign this contract or else, and he was just dissing, you know, basically saying, fuck the American, uh, Kickboxing Association, um, really, you know, immaturity, and that just goes to show, I guess, why the Fertitas are crucial, because they know how to make business deals, I mean, they're been able to do business deals, you know, due to the fact that they have a pretty strong casino business, although, due to the falling economy, uh, that's been, uh, hurting his business there, but I don't know, all in all, it's, it goes to show how, you know, you need Fertitta there, but overall, I think this whole likeness of this thing, come on, guys, I mean, it, these guys don't want to, you know, be able to not own themselves, I mean, let them all have their name, for Christ's sake, uh, I mean, you got guys like Randy Couture and Chuck Liddell who are going to be fine for the rest of their life, I mean, they have nothing to worry about, but, you know, John Fitch and Josh Koscheck and, you know, Chris Welsh, they don't got a lot. I mean, they just got to get a couple fights going, and, you know, if they lose and they're out, then, well, they basically could be out of a job, because then, you know, most people, well, you now Fitch and apparently Welsh are back now, but still, I mean, oh, I mean, Dana overreacting to this is kind of childish. I mean, I can see where you're coming from, Dana, when you release uh, Marcus Aurelio and Fabricio Berdum, who didn't have strong records and wanted to get paid more than they were worth 
you know, what their record was. I completely agree with the, you releasing them due to the state of the economy and everything of that nature. I understand that, but, you know, over just because they didn't want to sign a contract to give the UFC the right to own their, own their names forever, like, in, like, tax forever. I mean, I completely disagree with that. Uh... That's that's where uh, Couture and Liddell aren't gonna have any problems because you know they're stars forever and UFC can own those. And I mean Chuck and Randy, they're too old as it is to go anywhere. But some of these younger guys who can be stars anywhere else, like say you know Dream starts picking up and you know Fitch and uh, Koscheck or Welsh want to go over there, well and you know be put in a Japanese game where they could get more uh, you know royalties from. Well, no, the UFC owns that, so right there, that's pretty pretty weak there. Anyways, let's move over here to the world of pro wrestling and something that's actually got me excited. Every year, as most of you probably do know, New Japan Pro Wrestling, the beginning of the year holds, you know, one of the biggest shows of their year. It's their Tokyo Dome show. Um, this is going to be their 20th year doing it and they are going out all out. I mean, we all knew that a lot of the Japanese promotions wanted to work with New Japan. I mean, Pro Wrestling Noah wants to work with New Japan. Uh, all Japan's going to and I believe Dragon Gate and maybe even Osaka Pro I think tradition as well. But they have, and TNA is also going to be back there, but they've announced some of the talent that's going to be on there. Now, the TNA talent that's going over is a pretty good name. I mean, you're getting Kurt Angle to come back. He's probably going to, you know, maybe have a match with either, you know, Chono, maybe a rematch with Nakamura. I think that would be pretty interesting there. But I don't know what you're going to do with Angle because, you know, Angle can have a good match with anyone on the roster. I mean, he had this awesome match this year with uh, Yuji Nagata on the same Dome show, so that's pretty interesting. They're bringing Kevin Nash over. I think maybe Nash versus Chono would be interesting since, you know, both guys were a part of the NWO and Chono was uh, one of the key, I believe he was the leader of NWO Japan. Uh, still, I mean, I think that's just to rekindle that rivalry and, you know, how important it was. I think that's the only smart thing to do with Nash. Uh, they're bringing over as well the Motor City Machine Guns, put them up there up against um, um, Naido and uh, the current IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champions. Uh, I forget their names at the moment. I, ah, sorry guys, I'm trying to do this quickly here. Uh, the Guns versus the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champions are against Jado and Guido. That would be some really interesting match right there. Um, even up against... Prince Devet and his partner, who I can't... Uh, Minoru. Uh, Prince Devet and Minoru. That would be interesting. Or even against Liger and uh, Akira, that would be some really interesting tag wrestling there. And uh, they're bringing Team 3D over as well. I think they could probably get a rematch against Makabe and Yano. Uh, simple there. Or, I mean, uh, uh, Ten Koji as another team. There's like four teams in the running to have a match. It'll probably... I think a rematch with uh, Makabe and Fine, since, you know, Maccabi and Yano no, yeah, no, are the current IWGP Tag Team Champions. And, you know, uh, Team 3D did beat Maccabi and Yano earlier this year on that same Dome show. So that's just going to be pretty interesting. Uh, it's a pretty strong list of ta talent that teenage gets to bring over. I mean, you're always going to have some goodness there with Kurt Angle and, and the Guns. And, you know, Team 3D in Japan, they bring out a different work rate since they know how important it is into Japan. And they still got that, you know streak thing that they can build off of. Nash, whatever. I mean, if you do something with Chono, it'll just be fun. But the biggest name that they brought out, the biggest name that they brought out that I absolutely just marked out for completely was Mystico. CMLL's top star, you know, the guy who created a whole new interest in Lucha Libre in Mexico gets to come over and I am just f freaking out on who you put him in. He up the thing against Sarah the top star. Maybe him against Nakamura. I mean, just Mystico gets to come back to Japan. I mean, it's just fucking amazing. Uh, I don't even... Oh, my God. Mystico was coming back. That's just freaking awesome. Uh, I mean, this is like, you know, Mystico had been teased for years, for uh, for a while now, for, like, you know, going over to a couple other shows. I mean, he'd been teased to come over to WWE as, uh, you know, part of the, I believe, the 2006 or they're even going to sign Mystico and, you know, have him, you know, be the next Rey Mysterio Jr., but CML will put the kibosh on that. Very nice to see that CML actually let Mystico go back to Japan. He hasn't been back to Japan since he was over there in Michinoku Pro. Uh, really, really very, very nice news there. And also on top of that, you have the main event with for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship of... Uh, <clears throat> Hiroshi Tanahashi is going to take on Keji Moto. I mean, come on, that's just going to be awesome there with the build that uh, 
Tanahashi, you know, he respects his idol, and, you know, he just can't be able to beat him. And the last match they had was a time limit draw. I believe it was a 60-minute time limit draw uh, in the Carnival or the G1 tournament, I believe. I can't can't remember off the top of my head there, but still, that's going to be a fucking awesome match. Could be, this could be potential show of the year at the beginning of 2009. That's how good this is. Um, also moving over into Mexico... A couple of things there. Um, for those of you who are not following it, as I mentioned the last time I talked about Lucha Libre, is there's this whole angle that you know Conan is now the storyline owner of uh, AAA, which now means that their top star is a uh, who is Cibernetico is leaving the promotion. But part of this is angle. Part of it is not. I mean, Cibernetico at the end of the shows they had uh, last weekend put on a Peras de Mal T-shirt on which is uh, El Hijo de Pero Aguayo's, you know, upstart independent promotion, and was his uh, former faction back in CMLL before the two split ways. Now, to me, this means a couple of things. One, it's either that uh, uh, Cibernetico is going to bring in the Legion, to bring in uh, the Peros de Mal to fight the Legion, which is basically the other foreigners, like the Heart Foundation 2.0. Or it can mean this. It can mean that, you know... Triple A is trying to make this seem so real, back like WCW with the loose cannon and Brian Pillman, seems so real he's going to leave the promotion and, you know, maybe come up over to some CMLL shows, since that's the last place this is, or, you know, he's even officially been announced that he's going to be working the Peros de Mall uh, independent show, which I believe taking place late November, early December, uh, not sure 100% on the date yet, but, you know, he's going to be teaming with uh, El Hio Pero Aguayo, so... Still, I mean, Triple A is taking a big chance there because anytime you push something of this real realism in pro wrestling, it never works. I mean, you try this. WCW tried this with Brian Pillman pulling this loose cannon gimmick where you know he told Eric Bischoff that you know, oh, I'm gonna take, don't worry, and I'll come right back. Well, what happened was Brian Pillman then decided to leave, go to ECW, and then he eventually went over to the WWF. I mean, the same thing's gonna happen here. It's he's gonna leave it. Cibernetico could leave AAA to work this indie show, which, uh, the Peros de Mall show, which could be a little independent promotion, and then eventually you can get CMLL in Cibernetico's ear, and Cibernetico goes over to CMLL, and now CMLL's looking pretty good. I mean, you know, they're having some rough business, but now they have two of the biggest stars in Mexico in Mistico, uh, you also had Dr. Wagner Jr., and now you add Cibernetico to that? Yeah. Uh, that's going to be some pretty interesting stuff there. I don't know what's going to happen here. Hopefully AAA realize, gets smart and actually realizes that anytime you work the internet with, you know, oh, this is all real, he's leaving the promotion. Uh, I mean, it's apparently supposed to come back, and he's even, you know, scheduled to have work like five shows this week in general. So, But still, you better be careful when you play with the realism. I mean, when you look at the realism in wrestling with these angles, look at all the uh, freaking marriage angles. Come on, wherever the, the male hates the woman. Most of those relationships end up breaking up, most recently Kurt Angle and Karen Angle. But anyways, uh, other CMLL news, uh, CMLL, uh, or Lucha legend, uh, Pierrot suffered a stroke as, you know, he was in some serious condition there. Uh, no further word, really, but uh, for those of you who don't know who Pierrot is, if you've seen the 1997 Royal Rumble, where they have a lucha talent in there, like they have Mil Mascaris, they have Cibernetico, they have Latin Lover, um, really, he's he's one of the guys who gets eliminated by Mil Mascaris, and Mil Mascaris cross by eliminates himself. That's Pierrot. Uh, I mean, he'd been, you know, a star, a heel in uh, CML for a very long time. He was trying to make a comeback, but now he suffers a stroke. I don't know how that comeback's going to happen here. And finally, to end the day on news, Ring of Honor has made it to direct TV. Ladies and gentlemen, Ring of Honor has actually probably executed one of the smartest business plans a company that's relying on DVDs is. And that is all their, most of their DVDs are now going to be on pay-per-view. Um, now they have direct TV, you have also these in-demands, now you're in, available in 17.3 million homes, so you can, they're now putting their DVDs up for pay-per-view, so you don't have to keep buying the DVDs. I don't know if it's going to work all the way, I know they're putting their new Glory by Honor stuff up on pay-per-view, which you should do, I think they should have done this in the first uh, for a very long to put these big shows that are very important to the company and get it gets it over that you know they have these important shows you know kind of like mini WrestleManias there but anyways you get the point 
this is really smart. And now you get more audience, you know, probably spending less dollars on, you know, the shows than you probably would for DVD. Hopefully Ring of Honor then cuts the price of the DVD by five bucks and you get more audience. And then you can survive there. Now Ring of Honor is trying to, has actually a smart plan where they're able to not have to wait one month for a pay-per-view that, you know, doesn't get that much buzz. They also get more homes, so now they're going to get more increase on their pay-per-views annually. This is a real smart business plan. This is a smart move by Kerry Silken and the new management. Um, really looking forward to this. Let's see how this works out. But anyways, that's it for me. I'm out. Peace.